Hi there, Ren Roberts here. Welcome to this little tutorial about linear graphing in Excel. This is actually a means to an end because what I want to actually show is not just how you can graph two linear equations so that the lines intersect in a graph but also how you can solve for linear equations or simultaneous equations uh, using matrices. So we we'll start with some equations. Our two equations are in the first case y is equal to 3x minus 11 and in the second case 3 is equal to minus 2x plus 4. These have been chosen because they conveniently intersect in a graph that I can show in this tutorial. What you should know already is that these equations are in the form y equals mx plus constant c. And the m in the case of the first equation is 3, which is the slope of the line. And in the second case of minus 11, that's the constant added to 3x to get the value of y. Now let's remember that y is the y-coordinate, axis is vertical, and x is the horizontal axis. Okay, now if you don't understand those things, you really need to go to some sort of primer, because you probably won't understand much of what follows. However, if you do know those things, you should be fine. Um, much of what we're going to be doing is really about Excel and how it handles graphs. Well, the first thing we need to do if we're going to solve this in Excel is to have uh, a table showing the value for y computed from the equation, that is, that 3x minus 11 is y. Here's my rearrangement to show what I'm going to be doing. So x1 and y1 are going to be coordinates on the graph with values computed from the equation of the line which is this equation and x2, y2 will be computed from this equation and I'm just going to make them happen down here in this line. Since I know where I'm going I'm going to start with 0. So I'm going to put 0 in here and the next value for x is going to be the previous value plus 1 and I'm just going to draw those down let's go down to say 19 well what's the value of y1 when x is 1 well this we do know because it's going to be equal to 3 times x x is the value of 1 so that's now um, computed there where x is the value of a7 and we're going to have to take away 11 because that's the equation we get minus 8 then we can draw that down and pull down to when it's 13 uh, I've missed out the 0 there that was a mistake so I'm just going to pull that up so it should give us minus 11. We can see that when x is 0, you should get a y value of minus 11. That's called the y-intercept, of course. OK, we're going to do the same on this x2 axis. But of course, it's going to be the same as this axis. So I'm just going to do uh, equals here and just pull that down. Now this value of y is going to be different because it's a different equation. So it's going to be minus 2 times and obviously we want the x value and we're going to add 4 and we get 4 uh, because again that's the y-intercept. So if we now drag that down we get a table. Now I'm just going to delete the last one here because I really only want a dozen values, it's only in the illustration. 
So now, well, of course we've got 13 values because we start from zero, but you see what I mean. So, okay, what we're going to do next is make a graph. Well, in order to make a graph in Excel, we really need to tell it that we want to make a graph. So we say insert, and then we find some way to insert a graph. We could insert a line graph. You'd be right in thinking a line graph would be suitable, except you wouldn't, because in Excel, <laughs> <laughs> it doesn't quite work like that. What we actually want is a scatter graph which uh, has various forms and one of them, the scatter with marked points, is the one I quite like for this tutorial. So uh, miss out the line because it's not quite what we want and we get this. Now that's not very inspiring because it's just a blank axis we need to tell it what the data points are in fact we need to tell it quite a lot of things so uh, the first thing to do is probably to uh, click on the plot area and uh, right click and select data there are other ways of doing this by the way different orders but that's what we're going to do at the moment and we're going to add um, the uh, first series so what do I want? I want a series um, that is going to be called y is equal to 3x minus 11 and then I want the x values for that and uh, the x values for that are here so I tell it about that and then I want the y values which are here and I tell it about that and then I say thanks very much and there's my graph I click OK well, there's our graph. And if you might like to note that minus 11 is the intercept for this graph as it should have been indeed when x is 0. Well, we want to add another one. And no prizes for knowing what the other one is. It's the other equation. Because we want to see where they intercept. So, um, what we're going to do? Well, we're going to add. And this time the series will be called. Uh, y is equal to minus 2x plus 4 and the x series well we could use this x series but don't because Excel uh, doesn't quite like that sort of thing and so we're going to go over to here the very same x series that we had before because we're trying to keep it all on one graph and we're going to then say we want the y value uh, to be this one. Right, so when we say OK, we should see, oh, in fact, it's happened already, I think, we see the other graph has uh, been drawn with a different colour. How fortuitous. Right, so we'll click OK on that, I think, for the moment. We can see that there is an interception, and the interception is somewhere between 2 and 4 on the x axis and between 0 and minus 5 on the y axis. If we look at the tables, uh, and these tables were of course <laughs> cunningly chosen, um, you will find that there is in fact a, uh, a match on uh, this line here. That line there is saying that when x1 is 3, y1 is minus 2, and uh, y2 is also minus 2. So there should in fact be an intercept there, and that does look about right. In Excel, if we go to uh, Layout, we can choose to do something with the axes. Now the horizontal axis, which of course is X in this case, we can say we want to um, do something with it. And I don't really want to do anything with it. Uh, the vertical axis, I could show a default axis. Let's just see that there it is <clears throat> and well I said we don't want to do anything but for the sake of it we just go there and do the primary uh, show default axis okay um, if we go to um, layout we can also do grid lines and the uh, vertical grid lines might be quite useful here um, we do the major grid lines you can see a little bit more clearly 
what is going on and if you do more to those grid lines you can have major and minor you do kind of get uh, a greater visual acuity on finding that intersection I'll make that a little bit larger and uh, you can see it even better there you can see that that is in fact 3 minus 2 there are other things we could do to this graph in order to show that more clearly uh, but I'm not going to do that at the moment we should have a chart title it does look a little bit wrong not to have a chart title so uh, where do we go we can go to um, chart title here in fact there's um, it's, it's very easy to do this if I just click on there and um, I can either type in there well I'll just type in there and say linear equations and uh, I can pull that above it or pull it down a bit um, as is my want but anyone can leave it where it is we can also label these axes um, as we've already labeled the series we could label these axes as X and Y um, if you want to do that you need to find uh, the axis titles and you can say you want the title below axis well that's the X axis so um, we just say X axis and you get the idea uh, there you go and I'll just do the Y axis and come back okay we spend a dozen minutes or so over this uh, what have we got we got an intersection of two lines but we know that those lines each of them was computed literally computed from uh, two linear equations and we know that graphically we have solved for X and Y we can visually find the value for X and Y we could also look through the tables in this case we could also find these values through goal seek. Now, goal seek is um, something you have in later versions of Excel under data, where you've got the the one if, uh, what if, sorry, which uh, is not being shown here uh, because I've got nothing to. I'm selecting the graph. I think that's what it is. Um, now forgive me if I rush through this, I've just pasted this up to show you goal seek. Um, Y1 has got a value of 13. If you look at the formula, because that's three times the value of A25, which is 8. But Y2 would have the value of minus 12, because that is minus 2 times A25 plus 4. The difference between those two values is literally found here. It's computed as B25 minus C25 which is the value of 25 coincidentally and of course that tells us immediately that 8 is not the solution uh, when X is 8 Y is neither 13 nor minus 12 uh, to find the solution we can do a goal seek and what we do is we just click on the difference go to data and ask the what if analysis goal seek and say that our set cell, that cell is is the one we're in, which is D25. It's got a value of 25, but we want it to have a value of 0, so we just pop in 0 there. And we say that we want to change something. After all, you can't get something for nothing. What we're going to change? Well, clearly we're going to change this value here and get it to run through ipsitively to find what values do actually match. And when we click OK, we do find that... Uh, the difference is practically zero here that's a very low number and when x is 3 y1 is minus 2 and y2 is minus 2 so that was good I did say at the beginning we were going to show how matrices uh, find this solution for us I need to just say before we do that a little something and that is that matrices are different to solving simultaneous equations by either intelligence, that is algebra, or 
uh, indeed by looking down tables which is in fact even more intelligent because it uses the visual acuity of a human uh, usually with a very high intelligence and ability to uh, spot patterns and goal seek which uh, is very uh, rigid and inflexible it just works for this particular kind of example but this did show that difference is what was being measured that is there's a, um, a what one's trying to do is find a time when there is no difference or a place a situation where there is no difference between the um, the two lines they, they actually do intersect matrices require us to do a little bit of manipulation because matrices uh, for two lines like this uh, would have two vectors and uh, those two vectors uh, would have to uh, be uh, equal to or manipulate um, an XY matrix a two row one column matrix now it all sounds rather complicated and it is but it's not difficult uh, to use what we're going to create to solve these problems it requires almost no intelligence at all once you have this algorithm and you can run it and program it and it's very flexible uh, particularly because we can find what we need inside Excel and what we need is something called an inverse well let's work out the first manipulation the first equation is y is equal to 3x minus 11 we have to rearrange that to find what x and y as vectors would produce now here I've done it for us 3x minus y is equal to um, y so I've reversed it around um, implies that 3x minus y is equal to 11 and for the other equation this one up here uh, I've put minus 2x plus 4 implies that 2x plus y is equal to 4 this is very simple rearrangement of the equation the reason we have to do it as I said is because we have to write a matrix out that has a response to, or is uh, multiplying an XY uh, column matrix that's the XY column matrix and um, which I've put in the wrong position because otherwise we have run out of space sorry I just put it there and we want the matrix um, that is multiplied by the XY to uh, give us the uh, values the constants actually so that is we've got in the first case 3 for the 3x and 1 for the y what's well, minus 1 beg your pardon minus 1 and uh, for the second equation we've got minus 2 and we've got 1 now the uh, reason I mentioned at the very beginning of this uh, little tutorial that we have the equations of y equals mx plus c that the m is the slope well the m is the multiplier for the x and here we have the multiplier which is 3 so it's going to be th when we take the row against the column here it will be 3x uh, minus y and when we take this row against the same vector we get minus 2x uh, plus y which was here okay that little rearrangement is not hard but it leads us to something which is quite useful we can now say that that's equal to and I'll just write the equals here uh, is equal to uh, 11 4 so we just rearranged the equations but put it into matrices form 
Now we need to find the uh, inverse of this matrix and in this computer that's easy to do using Excel. Right, having scrolled down, I just need to say I want to find the inverse of this. The inverse is going to be the same shape. I'm going to press the F2 button just to get into that top left hand corner there and I'm going to say M I N and there it is. I'm going to press the tab key which is on my keyboard and it says it wants um, no I don't mean sorry I want the inverse press the tab key and it says it wants an array well the array is in fact here those four and I'm just gonna uh, press the right parentheses and I'm gonna do control shift and enter CSE is the code in Excel I did say that some of this tutorial was learning Excel so you press those three keys together control shift and enter and you get the inverse for that okay now I've spotted a little mistake here um, when I said minus two here I was misreading this it was minus two in the first form of the equation but when we re uh, rearranged the equation it became a positive two so I need to change that two and we get a different um, inverse. Now the inverse looks a little complicated if we just change the format of that to fractions it actually usually uh, unexpectedly I suppose fractions maybe uh, you think things look a little bit more difficult I'm just going to change it to fractions one just one digit and what we find is we get that. Now actually that in some ways is easier to understand I think because you can see that division by five is going on here and uh, that may show you that why it is that when we in fact at the mo in the moment multiply this by the 11.4 we do get out the solution it might help you to see that okay so we're going to uh, keep the XY here why not that just gives us um, the original equation it turns out that if we multiply this, the original matrix and the inverse, we get 1001, zero, zero, one, which when multiplied by the column vector gives us the same vector uh, that we had or matrix we had before. In fact, that's why it's called the unit matrix. So this little trick enables us to multiply by 11.4 and get uh, the answer we want. So let's just see that. I'll just copy that down so copy that down and now we have to do multiplication in um, um, Excel if I just make sure it's a column matrix that we're getting because um, Excel likes that I'm going to press the function 2 key again to get into that uh, cell there and just say this time uh, M mult and the array it wants the first one is this one and the second array will be this one here and I need to do control shift and enter because this is in fact an array function and I get 3 minus 2 woohoo so it's actually the same answer as before and believe me that is a relief for this person who is doing this tutorial so we have found by means of matrices this solution that we saw on the graph now you may be thinking oh Graham I, I didn't really follow what was going on with the using matrices but this is the wonder of this method you don't need to what you need to know about this method is only that it works it doesn't matter how many uh, simultaneous equations that we have it could be a hundred or a thousand of them this same method will work to find the solution if there is one of when uh, they all intersect if they do all intersect at the same place um, here's what you really need to know about equations when you start you have an equation you reshape that equation simply to get the constant as it were um, on the right hand side that is you want some vectors and so in the case of 
this one, you get that 3x minus y is equal to 11, and in the case of the second one, 2x plus y is equal to 4. You then, and this is very, very simple, you put them into a matrix format where they will, if multiplied out with x, y, or if you can do this in three dimensions, it doesn't matter, x, y, z, you come up with values. These values may in fact be empirical values. They may be values you've found by measurement or practice. They don't have to be esoteric or even academic. They can actually be things you've found in the real world doing experiments with things that perhaps travel at certain speeds in certain directions. So you can get data and uh, arrange it so that you put it into this form and then multiply it through using a program like Excel. And it will produce every time the solution, if there is one. For instance, you can ask the question just simply with this calculator that we have on the screen here. Is there a time when um, uh, we just change this, say I change that to 7 and that to minus uh, 18. Why? I don't know. But if I put that in, then we get a solution that when x is 1.930233, y is 0.139535. So if we were to plot this new equation, which I've just invented off the top of my head, we would find by graphing it that they actually, uh, this lo new line, uh, it did intercept with the previous line which was of the equation y equals minus 2x plus 4. Well thank you for watching. I hope I haven't tried to do too much in one tutorial. If anything what I'd like you to take from this is that when you're messing about with linear equations you can when you plot them perhaps see what's going on more readily than when you just try to follow the manipulations of numbers. And that in the case of linear equations, the values are in the end uh, coordinates and indeed in real life uh, vectors because these lines in real life, if they were um, talking about the movement of, of, of a vehicle, would be in a particular direction. They have an angle to each other and the uh, nominal um, arrangement of the graph. So matrices, when you manipulate matrices, you're actually dealing uh, with the coordinates and vectors. But it's all made very simple. Once you've got an equation, or two equations, or three, or four, or many, you can, by simple finding of inverses, and multiplying back against the values that you've got um, from the rearranged formula, come up with the solution if it exists.